Business is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. On the show today, you'll find out where book publishing is going and how to take advantage of it. How to identify and avoid publishing predators. What opportunities are emerging as the book trade evolves in new forms. How to avoid losing money and much, much more. Join us now as a variety of publishing pros will deliver insights and strategies to take the author to the next, next level of publishing. It's your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Brought to you by Author You and The Book Shepherd. And now, here's your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Well, welcome to another fabulous edition of Author You, Your Guide to Book Publishing. And I, I'm so tickled to have someone who I've known for years and years and years by reputation. She, I've never had the pleasure of having her as a guest um, on our show, but she will be back again and again, and I know it. And I'm tickled, Pink, because here we are in August, marching forward to the annual Author You extravaganza and Karen will Karen Strauss who is our expert today um, will not only be exhibiting so individuals who are participating will have the opportunity to speak to her face to face to strategize with her face to face to brainstorm to see how what her services as an expert in publishing um, from both the traditional side as well as the independent and especially this new evolving hybrid publishing, which we're going to talk about today, will be there. And she'll be, um, I guess I say, womaning um, one of our uh, rounds with the pros on Friday, the 20, what day is that? The 4th of August this month. So Karen has been, as I said, Karen Strauss has been someone who has worked with authors. I mean, what would, what do... Um, George Will, what do uh, Martha Stewart have in common? They have used her expertise to create books that rock, rock, and rock. So I I just want to jump into it right now. Karen, welcome to the show today. Thank you, Judith. It's a real pleasure to be here. Great. All right. So let's just jump in. Um, we want to really kind of deep dive into uh, the, the what you call the principles of successful publishing. You've seen books that probably that uh, you thought that really would would soar and be successful and they bombed. And you've seen books that you thought, well, maybe and they've just become huge successes. Mm-hmm. What separates them, Karen? But what's the separating factor? That's a really great question, Judith, and in some ways that's difficult to answer, but some of the the principles that people, you know, um, really need to watch out for is, I know this sounds obvious, but you'd be surprised, and the um, one of that is editing. I mean, if you have typographical errors, and that's been happening a lot lately, and even major books that have been um, have just come out. Emily Jane Fox did just a, from Vanity Fair, did a book on uh, Michael Cohn, and it's riddled with eras. Uh, and there was another book, right? Yeah. Ugh, ugh, ugh. Ugh, ugh, ugh. And there was um, another book that just came out um, that was also riddled with eras in terms of actual facts being wrong. So, um, in fact, that's Sean Spicer. I was trying to think of the name. So, Sean Mm -hmm. Spicer, as we know, was the press secretary for Donald Trump, just came out with a book, and he talked about the Steele dossier, and he wrote about, um, he said the author of the Steele dossier was Michael Steele. I know, the former, the former, former chair of the Republican National Party. Right. (laughs) <laughs> exactly, as opposed to Christopher oh Steele. So, yeah. and he talked about interviewing Obama in 1999 oh, yeah. as president. Okay. So, you know, you get this is going to, and and he's being ridiculed by all the press now. Um, and those kinds of things really affect your credibility and your reputation. Um, and you can imagine what it does for if you're um, an entrepreneur or a business owner and you get facts wrong or you get uh, you have typos, people really are are uh, nonplussed by it and they think, well, if you can't really edit your book properly, why should I work with you? 
So if this is your best product, why should I work with you? Why should I trust you? So yeah, I, I actually, Karen, yeah, watched the I, I watched the interview um, uh, earlier this month with the of uh, uh, the BBC, and they just creamed Sean Spicer. They creamed, creamed him. Creamed yes. him. And and you know, as an author uh, myself, who has done over a thousand media interviews that you have got to know your book inside and out. So number one, it, pro- it tells me either he didn't write the book, which could be highly probable, or two, mm-hmm. he didn't read the book, which could be highly probable, or three, <laughs> he wrote it and it just shows that he's incompetent. All of those are possibilities. And no author are. wants that to be reflected upon him or her. That's exa- That's exactly right. So that's, you know, that's really the number one, the number one thing. And you have to be careful because if you're self-publishing, um, you know, you may find an editor that, you know, a number of people say to me, uh, oh, I'm going to have my book edited. My sister is an English teacher and my, my, my cousin, you know, writes books all the time, you know, and, and so on and so forth. But if they're not familiar with the, you know, the, the, uh, principle, uh, the universal language in the publishing industry called the Chicago Manual of Style. Yes. Then, right? <laughs> and so, um, yes. if your editor is not proficient at that, uh, you know, mm-hmm. that's, uh, be wary, be wary. Mm-hmm. So, so there's a lot of, a lot of terrain that mm-hmm. authors kind of mm-hmm. need to, almost they mm-hmm. need to understand what the right questions are to ask. Mm-hmm. And also, you know, mentioning the the uh, CMS, the Chicago Manual Style, is that I think that we all need to be aware that there are changes and adds to it um, every time they come out with the new one. So you need to be tuned into it. But I, I think the one thing I want to say for some of our authors is, is hyphenation has changed for some words that were used to be common. Now they're just co-joined. Um, at times, I'm seeing that a lot. Those are those are common things I see in Karen and the editing style, and also, um, oh, I was I, I finally decided that uh, I, I saw French fries. Or it would be an example. French has always been capitalized. Now they're allowing it for B to uncapitalize. And I was having a hmm. comment with one of my clients, and I said, you know, Belgium waffles is still capitalized. I think I want to honor the French. Let's, let's go with the gas. <laughs> I love that, Judith. I will say I stick to my lane. My my lane is overall publishing and putting together, you know, the the team um, who knows mm-hmm. their stuff the best, right? And so, mm-hmm. I I think that's fantastic. You find an editor like yourself, or you know, other people who are like you know intricately um, knowledgeable uh, about this kind of thing, and you can't go wrong. Well, you know, I, I'm I'm really not an editor. Editor, I, I just those are little things that I'll pick up when I'm reading through. I, I just got through, um, and, and we're going to print now as as you and I speak um, on a wonderful medical mystery series. Brand new author debuting, and um, and I'm I really was on the developmental side on that. Mm-hmm. The the proofreading right. I right. made to other people because frankly. Um, and I think maybe, Karen, you might want to kiss on this because these people are important on the team. They're, they're different things that um, you, would, you really never would want me for, for, uh, uh, for proofreading because um, I've seen the book so many times I don't even see stuff anymore. Right. You know, that is important. See it. What, what you brought up was a really important point that some people, you know, you're going to don't hire. So there are different titles. Let's st- take a step mm-hmm. back. There are different types of editing. So there's content editing, developmental editing, mm-hmm. um, copy editing, proofreading, you know, and everybody kind of, lo- a lot of people lump that all together to think it's the same thing. Yes. But it's, it's clearly very different. And so developmental editing and content editing are uh, kind of a higher level. If you're having trouble constructing your story, um, or, you know, in a, in a nonfiction book, kind of figuring out what goes where, uh, and, or where the arch of your story is. You, and, and, and you're really struggling with that, then a developmental editor, content editor could definitely help you structure your story 
in a smoother way and look at the high level view of of you know how to place things, what to place things um, to make it um, a more exciting story, a more interesting story, or in the case of a nonfiction book, you know, a, a more coherent program. Mm-hmm. So, exactly. Um, right. And so once that's done, then you would be ready for copy editing. And copy editing is simply an editor going through the details of spelling, uh, syntax, grammar, you know, um, you know, the structure of sentences. It's really detail oriented. And that's where the person needs to be familiar with the Chicago manual style mm-hmm. to, um, to write, to, to really uh, adhere to those principles so mm-hmm. that we're all on the same page, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then proofreading is, is, I think, the most misunderstood editorial position in the land. Um, proofreading technically means You've now done your book. Um, you've actually done the interior design of the book. Everything is done. Then it's actually sent to a proofreader, with, and you're right that it should be somebody with fresh eyes who hasn't been involved mm-hmm. with the book in one mm-hmm. way or the other. right? So, so that person is actually comparing that proofread book to the copy-edited manuscript. Because lots of mistakes happen when you're flowing in the book for the interior design. Mistakes will happen or full sentences might be left out. You just never know. So, right? So, I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it too. You know, and in fact, Karen, we're we're, we're coming up to our first break here. So, let me me just say this I just got through with with the medical mystery book. And, um, you know, even li- like little lines um, that our copy, uh, our, our, I call this person the cold eye, the final cold eye person that gets to see it post layout. And as someone, you know, so I have like four layers that come in. But like, you know, thinking inside a line that I wanted to tell a size, it didn't get picked up. She picked it up. And you know, we think, thank God. Those are those little things that make such a difference. So with that, right. John Strauss, fabulous fabulous publisher um, is with us today. We'll be right back. It's all through you, your guide to book publishing. is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. Is there a book in you or another author you will show you how to create, develop, and publish your book without being good with? If you already have a book out, You'll find a supportive and brainstorming community that's connected and creative no matter where you live. Author U brings in national experts for its book camps and annual author extravaganza held each May. It has regular meetings and delivers webinars for its members on timely topics. Through Author U's extensive network, members enjoy exclusive benefits, including significant discounts for a variety of services necessary to publish. The Resource, its online book publishing news magazine, is content-heavy and it's free. If you want to create a book that has possessed punch and panache author you is for you if you're a hobbyist or a casual author it's not join author you today through its website at author follow author you on twitter at author you and on facebook at author you where timely author and publishing tips and articles are posted daily author you where the author goes to become seriously successful Impressions are everything in the world of book publishing. Whether your book is an ebook, a print version, or both, your book cover needs to pop, sizzle, and sparkle to immediately capture the attention of your audience. And your book's interior needs to be just as dynamic and reflect the professionalism your readers demand. Nick Selinger of NZ Graphics has won numerous national and international book awards for his cover designs and interior layouts. With over 20 years of experience in graphic design, he knows what it takes to create award-winning books and the many promotional pieces that authors need, such as posters, banners, postcards, one-sheets, 
business cards, logos, and more. Visit ncgraphics.com and see what authors and publishers have to say about their award-winning books and how NZ Graphics can make your book the success it was meant to be. That's nzgraphics.com. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. If you want to write and publish a book, if you want to be successful as an author, your guide to book publishing, everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask, is for you. Stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Oh, today we're talking about really some of the principles of successful publishing. And we definitely do want to get into this new catchy phrase, hybrid publishing. Um, with us is Karen Strauss, who has her own publishing company. I do want her to talk about it um, before we leave our hour together. And we've been talking about some of the um, uh, mistakes where she hit editing was the number one lack of of maybe Karen, what we should say is the lack of complete editing. I always get people saying, well, I edit it myself. Well, good for you. That's where you start. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. yeah. All right. Good for you. I, I want you to good start you. there. That's a good idea. Now be open to when we come in and we start slashing. And and Karen, <laughs> that's where I found real resistance um, with a lot of authors. They They're so married. They so don't want to let go. And I, and I always say to them, look, at the job of an editor, whichever editor you're working with, is to make your work look better, to make you look better. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but it is else, like their baby, and they're, they're trying to, I get you it. know. And I do yeah. get it. And, and they've worked a long time on it. I get that, too. But now let's now, now we're going to fine-tune the baby. Right. They're like right. hoarders. They can't throw out anything. Oh, that's a good analogy. Holy moly. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. All right. So d- why don't you, Karen, let's, let's jump in. I referred to it a couple times. T- tell me about your background. Um, sure. And, 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 and maybe the background and then your evolution, because you came from traditional publishing. I'm, you know, published 18 of my 36 books with traditional publishers. I will, I'm a totally, totally willing to admit I am a publishing snob. I believe that only legitimate books were published by New York. That's that's garbage now. That's garbage. That's a garbage belief. Um, and and there's transitions that happen. And there's been a lot of transitions during both yours and my careers. Um, I've been in it for almost 40 years now. So. Wow, you may be the only person. Well, I've yeah. I, I always say, you know, I, I've I've been in publishing for like a hundred years, and I was <laughs> you know. I was actually at the Gutenberg Bible when it was published, so I've been there forever. <laughs> All right, there you go. But seriously, I've been in publishing um, 35 years, and um, it's incredible the um, the revolution that you know that that has yeah. happened essentially um, between the time I was first coming up and then, you know, to, to today, it's really mm-hmm. unbelievable. Yeah. And it's exciting. It's exciting for, you know, the, the average person and, you know, and it's really exciting in, uh, particularly for, um, entrepreneurs who want to get mm-hmm. the program out, mm-hmm. you know? Mm-hmm. So, so, um, in terms of my background, I, my first job actually was working at Macy's New York, doing special events and publicity. And one of the things that they gave me, assigned me to do was book events. Of course, uh, uh, there was, funnily enough, no one else wanted to do it. So they said, oh, get, give it to the new kid. So I was very excited. I got to work with all these publishers and sign up these celebrities and um, basically uh, create events um, at Macy's. So we did, one of the things we did was, you know, um, first time novelist. So Barbara, we had Barbara Taylor Bradford at that time who went on to become a multi, multi, um, book New York Times bestseller. 
but we had, you know, we had like essentially lunch and learns. So um, all these people would come to Macy's at like noon and we'd have these panel discussions and, you know, with authors on different themes. So one was women in business. And, you know, so there was a, a lot of different themes that we had. We created all these events. Plus we had um, major celebrities, um, a lot of tennis stars. So anybody who had product to sell basically and as well as books, uh, mm-hmm. we we did events. So that kind of led me to publishing itself when I was ready to leave Macy's, um, and I became a publicist at uh, Bantam Books, which became Bantam Double Day Dell, and that's where I met um, the, the precious Og Mandino, who became a, essentially one of my biggest mentors. And uh, if you've never read Og Mandino, just read The Greatest Salesman in the World, um, and he just had a way of weaving a story um, he did. that leaves you breathless, yeah. right? Absolutely. Yeah. I, and I knew Og, actually. So, oh, um, did you? I, oh, I did. Then you know. Yeah. 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 And I, I agree with you. Yeah, he was the pre-Zig Ziglar, you know? So, yep. um And so he just had a way of, of putting things in perspective. So... Um, so and that's and that's where I met Jimmy Carter. So at Bantam, you know, obviously we published a lot of celebrities, um, and we published the great book called um, um, Great Thighs and uh, what was it called? No, it was called Thin Thighs in Thirty Days. <laughs> oh, well, I remember so, that book. Remember that book was like the number one book on the New York Times for like <laughs> decades. <Yeah. laughs> Never it's goes out of style. Yeah. It, so what it's a very great title. fun. It, that yeah. was the title, yeah. Exactly. Yeah, titles are very important, you know. So, you know, doing um, – think uh, that's kind of another tip is to create a great title. And these days, make sure that you get the URL to your title because what you want to do is create a website. You want to create product. You want to create things from your title. So you want it all to be synonymous. And so if it's already taken by somebody else, you might want to reconsider – changing your title. So well um, and that's and that and that is another thing that authors are um sensitive um or, or or maybe they dig in their heels about because they're married to that too. Mm-hmm. Um and also subtitles where they don't get that this is really marketing. Your titles right, right. are about marketing. Mm-hmm. It's one of the biggest marketing tools um, that you can because it, it then leads to keywords and search engine optimization and you know, getting yourself higher in the Google search engine, all of those technical things that are critical to an author's success. As I am learning more and more about it, I just, I can't believe what can be done and how you can really orchestrate that, you know, you always want to be on on the first page of the Google search engine. And there are ways to do that. So, um, but so then I I was at I was at Bantam for a while, put authors on tour. At that time, there were no bloggers, there was no internet, and so you know it's mind blowing actually to think about that. So we actually called up producers of TV shows and radio shows, and um, and to book we had to book five or six radio, TV, and newspaper interviews and a book signing for an author for each author in each city. And then we had to arrange for an escort, meaning a driver, mm-hmm. <laughs> to to um, to bring the authors to 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 the places. And it was a very tight schedule, and it was done very manually. So we did this for our highest level authors. Um, and then after Bantam, I I went to Macmillan. I went to the Free Press division, which was a social science division, uh, pretty academic. And you could not have been more opposite than Bantam, which was extremely commercial. Uh, whereas Free Press was uh, all nonfiction, mostly written by academic professors. Uh, the marketing was primarily as supplementary texts, but they wanted to change that trajectory and they wanted to do more trade oriented books so they hired me to head up the publicity department to get reviews to to look at the covers and you know and kind of really kind of start start building that program um, they hired they wound up hiring um, g- a genius editor called Erwin Glickus um, who was um, 
he actually published, he was at Simon & Schuster when he published What Color Is Your Parachute, which Mm -hmm. is probably one of the best-selling books of all time. Oh, my gosh. Is it ever? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So if you're in between jobs or whatever, you know, you're not sure what you want to do, that's the book to read. And also, he was the publisher for George Well. And that's uh-huh. how I got to know George. And mm-hmm. so um, George came to the Free Press. Um, he had, at that time, he'd won a Pulitzer Prize. Uh, he was still writing. He was, you know, writing his columns for the Washington Post. And he was on um, This Week with David Brinkley. Um, and he was on the panel. So he was really everywhere at that time. And so that was a fun campaign to work on because um, basically my thought was, you know, everybody knew George Will, the intellectual and the (laughs) neoconservative and, you know, and so we had a certain kind of audience, but I needed to, I felt we needed to humanize him. And so, and George, you know what, George needs that. Um, you know, George he's totally as, needed that. Yeah. Yeah. As you and I have talked, he, he can be a tad arrogant. Uh, <laughs> I think. <laughs> <laughs> so we had a very interesting, we developed a very interesting friendship. Here I was, I was probably, you know, like early thirties um, at that time, you know, and he was not that much older, but he was still probably late forties whatever, um, and he was going through a divorce, um, and he has um, three, I think it was three children, one with Down syndrome, um, and so he would come to New York. He actually taught me how to drink my first martini, so so we would, we would go to bars and drink martinis and just talk about everything, and um, and so we just became the oddest of friends because I was this liberal Democrat, he was this neoconservative, and yet somehow we could meet in the middle on, on certain yeah. um, areas. And so the, but the, the publicity campaign essentially featured, I was the one who put him on the front cover of the book. Um, we had a you know professional photo shoot done for him that had never been done for him before. He'd never been on the New York Times bestseller list with all the books that he had written before, uh, and um, and so that was always his dream to do that. All right, and so, so we put him on. Yeah, you put, you put him on the cover. We're, we're going to take another quick break here and and come back. But I think what Karen's doing is she's showing you what has to be done that bring the full circle for an author. Very important. We'll be right back. is your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask with your host dr judith briles and we'll be right back with more great information right after these want to publish like a pro today well then take a look at ingram spark the only publishing platform that offers print and ebook services through a single source upload edit and manage titles all in one place Take more control of printing costs with Print On Demand and reach even more readers through one of the world's most extensive distribution networks. Built by independent publishers for independent publishers, Ingram Spark has everything you need to maximize your book's potential. Color printing, ebook distribution, print on demand, global reach, and more. Start publishing with Ingram Spark today and see just how far your titles will go tomorrow. That's IngramSpark.com. Many of us have dreamed of writing a book. Some of us even have. Then the hard work starts. You'll need an editor. Who will design the cover or typeset the pages? Who will format the ebook? If you're a business owner, consultant, or coach with a serious message and expertise to share, the team of experts at 1106 Design can guide you through the maze. They've helped more than a thousand authors create top quality books and avoid the not so reputable self publishing companies. Learn more at 1106design.com. Then call Michelle at 602-866-3226. 1106-DESIGN. When 
Ned Thompson and Harry Shore started Thompson Shore in 1972, they believed employees with great character would make up the best company. They were right. They hired people who were not only experts in bookmaking, but who were obsessed with quality and delivering exceptional customer service. Almost 40 years later, Thompson Shore remains a 100% employee-owned company. Ned and Harry knew that successful customer projects are a direct result of empowered employees. We specialize in all books for large and small publishers. Creating beautiful and well-made books, we're dedicated to pleasing our customers by making the experience a good one from start to finish. The personal touch we have with our customers allows us to be innovative in solving their most difficult challenges. Our platform also ensures that we can remain flexible to meet our customers' unique needs and expectations. Our marketing kit can create buzz for your title enhancing the promotion of your book during infancy. When you need to test the market to gauge your future sales, we can provide digitally printed books that will transition seamlessly into a larger offset run. From ebook to hard copy to delivery, our skillful customer service teams are at the ready to answer your most pressing question. At Thompson Shore, we know that making the highest quality books requires more than just best technologies. It requires superior customer service, professionalism to the trade, and commitment to environmental and social values. With these standards of excellence in place, you can be sure that we will always help you put your best book forward. Welcome back to your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. Coming up, you'll hear more about statistics, scenarios, and strategies on what to do now to get you published. So let's get back to the show. And here again is your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. All right, what I loved about what Karen was sharing about the um, uh, the birth of George Will as an author, best-selling author, is that um, how important it is to have someone who gets you and is willing to say, no, it's not going to work this way. This is what you need um, type of thing. And hopefully the author will listen. And I, and I think it's important for all of you to understand for one of the principles to be successful in the publishing business and as an author um, yourself is that you need to surround yourself with people who have been there, who have done that. And one of my pet peeves, Karen, and I'd love to have your input. And then what I want to do is get to get into some of the different options of publishing and the pros and cons of each, if we can, is that one of my pet peeves is that the individuals who publish a book and all of a sudden they're an expert and they're going to all become coaches to other authors. And that is such a kiss of death. Um, to me, you really need people who have been around the merry-go-round a few times. Uh, that's my two bits on that. All right. Yes, I, I agree with that. Yeah. All right. So what options do we authors, newbie authors, and even even authors who are maybe long in the tooth care in half? Because, you know, maybe the way you've always done it isn't the way you should continue to do it. What are our options today? What are the pros and cons? Great. So there are three, as I see it. One, everybody knows, is traditional publishing. So the big six, Simon & Schuster, Macmillan, Random House, so on and so forth. That's very difficult to get into these days. You need an agent. You need to do a major book proposal. Even if the agent can sell your book, you know, it's still going to take about, um, if they sign you, it still takes 18 months. Um, to two years to actually before your book will see the light of day. Um, Self-publishing, we know is Amazon publishing, but, you know, one people your audience may or may not know is that Amazon's create space no Mm -hmm. longer actually um, is is hiring uh, editorial services. They're actually not, you know, they, they won't do your book these days. Now, no. Once you get your book done, right, so you can upload it to CreateSpace, but you cannot mm-hmm. essentially use CreateSpace. So now you're really kind of on your own. To, well, that means, yeah, it. and the, and so what that means is, guess what, people? You've got to hire an editor, you've got to hire your designers, and you've got to get it done. And CreateSpace actually blew, you know, they they crossed the line and said no more last March. 
and they put out not really loud, loud mm -hmm. warnings mm -hmm. to everybody that said, you better get copies of your stuff because guess what? You're no longer going to be able to change it. <laughs> exactly. That's yeah. right. And so, and that was really interesting, yeah, that a lot of people didn't didn't know that. It was put out kind of in the in the trades, so to speak. Uh -huh. So the publishing people knew it, but the you know, the world um may or may not be aware of that. Uh -huh. So so that's something to, to watch out for. Um and then of course there's hybrid publishing, which is somewhere in between self publishing and traditional publishing. So just to, to go into briefly the pros and cons, traditional publishing, one of the pros is, yes, they do get you, uh, for the most part, wider distribution. Uh, many or most of these traditional publishers do have sales reps on the road, and so they call on individual bookstores. Obviously, they work with Price Club Costco and the airport stores. They have relationships with the chains. They see them regularly. So... So there is um, a, a wider, um, a bigger team that might be at your disposal to help sell the book in. Now, that mm -hmm. doesn't mean the book will sell out. So mm -hmm. I've always considered sales selling the book into stores and marketing is selling the book out of stores. Oh, I so, love that differential. Um, is that good? Selling, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think it's into the stores and marketing is out. Out, on, right. On how how you are know, you going to get people to get get it, you know, walk into the stores to buy your book? Exactly, and I, you know, I'd love to add on to this because you did bring up the Costco, um, and they have a phrase called "selling to the table," selling to the table, and meaning if your book comes in, you have roughly two weeks to sell it till they're gone, and if it doesn't, right, right. your book is gone. It, it does it. I, it doesn't matter if they order a thousand books and nine hundred and eighty two sell. It didn't sell to the table, so they're gone. And um, the other thing is about the airport stores. I think that what authors need to understand, Karen, is there is a cost to get in coverage in an airport store into the, that front table around the circle, little, oh, little oh. separate faces. Huge cost. It's, yes. a few, it's many thousands of dollars, listeners. And that uh, can you pitch it to the, the two key players out there? Yeah, you can. It's going to cost you, but again... It's just what Karen said. You have to market like crazy to move those books out. You got to market right. like crazy. And, but what we've been able to do, Judith, though, is um, in our with our hybrid publishing company, and, and one of the benefits of me being um, a sales director at Random House and um, and Crown uh, and Crown and Avon was I formed relationships with a lot of these people, and mm -hmm. so we have relationships with places like Hudson News. And and what we can do is get them to buy books for local airports. So if you live in, we're working on a book now where the author is really in the Michigan, you know, if we, right. we want books in the, right? So we want, we just want books in the Michigan airports, which is basically right. two. So maybe right. they'll buy 50 or 75 copies of the book. It is a steep discount, no question. And, yep. you know, as you say, they also have an algorithm the way, Price yes. Club Costco does. If it doesn't sell, it's a, you know, they have to sell so many books per square foot in a certain amount of time. So, yes, you don't get a lot of time to do it, but we we can put books in in a little more carefully measured way. Mm -hmm. So, um, mm -hmm. and, and that's not something actually traditional publishers are particularly interested in because they want, they want, Hudson News to buy 10,000 copies of the book and then they can just, you know, throw it to the wind and see what sticks. Mm -hmm. So, um, so in any case, yes. So you're absolutely right about, you know, be careful what you ask for because they might be able to distribute your books. And even with the chains, you know, Barnes and Noble. So if they can sell 10,000 copies into Barnes and Noble, but 8,000 copies come back, what's the point? Which is so, common. Which is common. Very much so. Very much yeah. so. And again, it comes down to 
Um, even, you know, even with marketing, even with getting a lot of publicity, there's no guarantee people are actually going to walk into the bookstores and buy your book when they can buy it on Amazon or even at BN.com and get it at a cheaper price than you might at a, at a, a brick and mortar stores. Mm-hmm. So, and, and what I, and Karen, what I do tell authors, if you, if your goal is to have your book in the bookstore, is it really truly a goal that you that you will support and you will drive everybody you know to go to those bookstores, or is it your yeah, ego yeah. speaking? And I think yeah, right. you have to have a talk in the mirror on that one. Agreed, a hundred percent. I think that you know the the first question I always ask an author is, what is your optimal outcome? What do you want to have happen for this book? Do you want to drive business? Um, do you, want to, do you want to get more speaking engagements? Do you want to get publicity? Or do you want to be a New York Times bestseller? And you have mm-hmm. to be honest as you say, look, look yourself in the mirror and really, or do you want the message to get out and be impactful to, you know, tens of thousands of people? Um, and, and, and define that for yourself before anything. And then mm-hmm. we can always take it from there and help you mm-hmm. achieve that. Exactly. Right. So, and, the, and then the key thing for traditional publishing, the pros are, yes, the publisher pays all the expenses. They may even pay you, you know, a small advance. Um, and, um, you know, and that's nice to, you know, to have, to have a book all paid for. Um, but then you have to watch out for the cons. So the cons are um, in traditional publishing. You need an agent, and that's very difficult to find these days. Um, they give you smaller royalties. They only pay you about eight to twelve percent of the, um, I believe it's of the retail price of the no, book. No, 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 no. Uh, it's no, no, no. They pay net. In the net. old days, some it was on do. retail. Okay, so some. It seems that the, that people are different. You may know better than me, but. Um, so if it's eight to twelve percent of the net, that's even worse. So yeah, it's ten, um, it's it's a standard. Um, I, I know the hardback starts at ten percent. That's still the ten, twelve and a half, fifteen um, for mm-hmm. the five, ten, uh, fifteen thousand copies. But for the paper, it ranges from seven to nine percent. But it was Simon and Schuster right. that did that crossover, and all of a sudden they sent these emails out because I was one of Simon and Schuster's authors. And saying we are revising the contract to reduce it to net. <laughs> oh, see, it used to be net when I, you know, when I was at Bantam, it, yeah. it was it was always net, and then the author skills got involved, so on and so mm-hmm. forth, and then it got changed to retail. the retail price of the book, yeah. and now uh, and now it's back to net, which is, mm-hmm. you know, which is what. Um, essentially self-publishing and hybrid publishing, but we give you hybrid publishing, you know, uh, oh, six... Wait, okay, we'll come back to that. Oh, we're, we're, we're talking about royalties. We're going to come back. We're going to take our final break, and we're going to get in, We're getting into the nitty-gritty here. This is your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. And we'll be right back with more great information right after these. The book shepherding concept is simple. The publishing world is changing and so must you. You need an experienced shepherd and a guide to partner with you as you create, strategize, develop, publish, and achieve your publishing goals. You can't do it alone without paying the price. You can spend your money creating a book that turns out to be so-so, or you can create a book that looks and feels classy, builds your brand, and is a financial success, a bestseller. It's your choice. You choose. You need the book shepherd. Publishing is riddled with obstacles, sometimes nightmares for the author. You don't need problems. You want solutions. Dr. Judith Bryles will shepherd you through the maze and the chaos. At times, she's had to step in and rescue a book, a book that has been sabotaged by a publisher or by a publishing service provider or sometimes even the author themselves. Judith Bryles is the book shepherd. If you want to create a book with no regrets, give her a call today, 303-885-2207. That's 303-885-2207 or email her at judith at bryles.com. By the way, Bryles is spelled B-R-I-L-E-S. 
Follow Judith on Twitter at MyBookShepherd and on Facebook at The Book Shepherd. One of the most important decisions you will ever make is your choice for printing your book. You are choosing a company which will be responsible for guiding you through the process and printing your book at a level of quality and detail that embraces your personal and creative needs. You want to choose a company that when your book finally arrives, you are delighted and ready to move on to the next level and one that is customer focused. Choose King Printing Company and Addy Books to be that company that brings you to the next level. Go to kingprinting.com or call 978-458-2345 and ask for Tom Campbell. At Total Printing Systems, customer service is our priority. We are located in Southern Illinois. Our employees have an average of 18 years' experience and know that customer relationships are important to our continued success. We have been a short-run book printer for nearly 40 years and always stay at the forefront of technology. Our niche is from 1 to 5,000 copies. Today, we offer digital black and white and four-color high-speed inkjet printing, a cost-effective way to introduce color into your short-run titles. We, of course, offer traditional offset printing as well. Bindery is done in-house, from adhesive case binding to PUR, perfect binding to mechanical binding of all types, including side sewing. We provide warehousing, kitting, distribution, inventory management, a new print-on-demand facility, streaming browser-based ebooks, and bookstore. Call us at 1-800-465-5200 for a quote on your next book project. You can also visit our website at www.tps1.com. Welcome back your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask if you want to write and publish a book if you want to be successful as an author your guide to book publishing everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask is for you stay tuned and you'll hear about statistics scenarios and strategies on what to do now to get you published so let's get back to the show and here again is your host dr judith bryles All right, this has gone so fast. This is what happens when I have someone on who is a like minded <laughs> when we're into publishing. Karen Strauss is with me. We're talking about the pros and cons, actually, very quickly, of traditional um, self publishing and hybrid publishing. And we do want to get into that very quickly. So, with that said, um, that I, I just wanted to wrap up that when, uh, Karen brought it up um, when we were off air that one of the cons of traditional publishing is they own the, they own the book rights. I mean, you own the copyright. Author gets the copyright, or they should. But the publisher, you know, they're in control here. Now, you want to add to that at all? No, I, th- I think what you said is exactly right. You should just be very careful because you would have to ask their permission to do a second edition or even, you know, whatever writings you, you might be uh, speaking about or, or writing about, you know, um, should not be an infringement on their contract. So. Mm-hmm. Exactly. All right. So, all right, let's, let's jump into self-publishing pros. Right. So the pros are they get you in fast to market. So they don't, they, they might take eight weeks or whatever. It, they go as fast as you go, basically. So that's a key. You can get, you can get into distribution and market and, and to the market in a very quick way. You are totally in control of, of, of your book, with the design, with the cover, with, you know, editing, with, with everything, you're in total control. And the, the big one is you pretty much keep all the money. Amazon, Barnes & Noble will take, um, or whoever you work with, um, will take some percentage of, um, you know, a commission or, or whatever, but basically you keep the lion's share of, of the money that you make. Uh, the cons for self-publishing is the quality, frankly, the quality of the printing really varies. And so you kind of have to be uh, wary of, you know, of, of how that's going to work. Um, clearly with self-publishing, um, they do no marketing. So it's the marketing is really, it's 100% on you. You get no partner, you get no help to do the marketing. And everything is do it yourself. As you alluded to before, Judith, you know, you've, you've got to get an, uh, an editor, a designer, um, you know, a, a, a pretty much everybody to do it, um, 
to do it for you, you've got to assemble your own team and it's all do it yourself. And that's very difficult. Mm-hmm. And well, and, so the, but when you, yeah, or, or you work with someone who will bring them to the party for you. You know, you find someone who, which is what I do, but you bring, you, you get a team together and, and, you know, and what you do, which is in, and we're going to jump over to the hybrid publishing is you've got a team already under your umbrella. Well, I do, right. but I don't publish other people's books any, I used to. I don't. I, I do everything that a hybrid publisher does, but I have the for my clients. They create their own publishing company. Where what right. you're doing, Karen, is they come underneath your publishing umbrella. Correct. Correct. So with hybrid publishing, um, essentially, at least the way ours work, you know, with with hybrids, we're all a little bit different because in some ways it's pioneer zone. Um, the good thing yeah. to know is if you go to the um, IBPA, the Independent Book Publishers Association, they have recently created um, criteria for what what constitutes a valid hybrid publisher. So there are certain rules um, um, th- that they that they require. So one of which is distribution, another another of which is royalties of fifty percent or higher. Um, you know, and so um, if if you go to IBPA, you could actually take a look at or if anybody wanted to um, email me, Judith, or I could send it to you, you know, I've got the document. So uh, Karen, here's um, what I'd like you to do. Well give the name of your company, one, and two, your contact information. So my company is called Hybrid Global Publishing, and it's hybridglobalpublishing.com. And the way they can contact me is Karen at hybridglobalpublishing.com. Perfect. So, right. So the pros, I just wanted to get into the the pros of hybrid uh, publishing um, because we are a one-stop publishing company. So we offer all the same services that a traditional publisher would have. Um, and as I mentioned before, I spent much of my career in traditional publishing, so that's my pedigree, and that's the standards that I uh, work on with my book. My entire team has worked in traditional publishing, and so we adhere to all of those standards and the criteria. We also meet the criteria of what a hybrid publisher um, is, um, according to the IBPA. So the pros are, again, um, we get your book fast to market, so we can publish a book um, from between eight and twelve weeks um, to um, by the time you hand me your manuscript. Now we do we start from copy editing. If you come to me and you need a developmental editor, or if you've already worked with Judith, and then you can come to me, you know, for the rest of it, that would be awesome. Um, but essentially, I just want to be clear that the eight to twelve weeks starts from copy editing, and then uh, we do everything else with um, interior design and the cover design. We create the eBooks for you. We do all of the distribution. Um, meaning you'll you'll be on Google Play and iPad and um, iTunes, um, obviously Amazon, Barnes and Noble, and wherever books are sold. So, uh, so um, the key thing is you own the rights a hundred percent. There's you know that's in our contract. Um, you own the rights to um, you know to your content. So. This, we are a one-stop shop. We do give you wider distribution in the sense of, as we talked about before, um, since I still actually do, I think what makes us different is that we do still work with traditional publishers and we are key account representatives for them. So our relationships with Barnes & Noble and with Hudson News and with some independent bookstores, obviously the wholesalers, Baker & Taylor and Ingram, are live. You know, we have relationships with them, and so my hybrid uh, publishing company, our authors get the benefit of that. If you want to be in these places, uh, we have the mechanisms available to do that. How often do the hybrids um, pay royalties? Well, we do it quarterly. So so we pay you every every three months. Um, You'll get get, uh, commission... You'll get uh, royalty reports. Our royalties now are actually um, extremely competitive. We're at 60% of the net for print books and 80% of the net for ebooks. So, 
um, you know, that's that's a pretty good deal. So um, the the cons I just wanted to say of hybrid publishing is yep. it is author centric marketing, but that's really no different from self publishing or even in traditional publishing today. They don't really offer you much. So, you know, but what we do do is help you with creating a marketing execution strategy. We don't leave you hanging out to dry. So we have several um, actually programs that we can help you with, which include Amazon bestseller campaigns and even helping you get reviews on Amazon, valid um, reviews on Amazon if you need, because these days in order for, you know, the discovery on, the, on Google and discovery on Amazon um, algorithm is you need at least um, 10, 20, 30 reviews on Amazon, and sometimes that can be difficult to get. So we can help you with that. We can help you, you know, with blogger campaigns and some publicity. And, you know, so we offer different kinds of marketing scenarios to help you, or we can um, – refer you to um, our vetted people. So we don't leave you out to dry. So, so, so Karen, one, there has to be a cost to all this, though. So what would be... Of course. There, yeah, and, and, and the other campaigns, I mean, once the book's out, if they go into, whether it's an Amazon bestseller or et cetera, we have about two minutes here, but is there um, an additional cost for those? Yes, so if they want to... We, we have a basic package um, that includes, you know, the the um, cover design, interior, the editing, the ebook conversion. We give you 50 free copies of the book and the distribution and the conversations that we have about marketing and about the cover design and so on and so forth. And an average price for that might be five thousand or fifty five hundred dollars, depending on the length of your book. Um, we do offer payment plans. And then um, different kinds of marketing strategies. So an Amazon bestseller campaign, um, the cost of that might be an average of around $1,500. So and I know that a lot of people are, a number of people who offer bestseller campaigns are charging upwards of three to $5,000 to oh, do it. Oh, higher, so, Karen. I, I know one that goes at 10000 So oh. I think that's crazy. There's no I, reason I for too. that, in my opinion. Yeah. yeah it is so, yeah, and I'm glad you, you mentioned the reviews. Uh, the reviews are really important, and one of the challenges, I mean, I know from my new book, um, How to Create a Million Dollar Speech, people who actually bought books, and they went up and put reviews on, and because somehow this person was connected with me on Facebook, but they kicked it all off. And, you know, Amazon, you know, has kind of gone all the way over, but people be wary, these things do happen, so... Oh, absolutely. Amazon is kicking off deleting reviews if they think it's from your mother, your family, or, know. you know, some kind of, or, you know, if someone. it's not valid. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Or if you're not right. a Prime member these days. Oh, yeah. All right. So we have to do a quick wrap with us is Karen Strauss. She is the brains, the visionary behind hybridglobalpublishing.com. I suggest you check it out. Karen, thank you so much for being with us today. My pleasure, Judith. Can I just want to say I'm, um, I'm happy Go. to brainstorm. Yep. You've got it. Oh. <laughs> Give Karen a call. Um, check okay. her out, Karen, at hybridglobalpublishing.com. We'll be with you next week. Thank you for being a part of your guide to book publishing. Everything you want to know but didn't know what to ask. With your host, Dr. Judith Bryles. Each